Yes, um, good evening all of you, those present here and uh, our viewers, the online viewers, I'm glad to be here once again. I can see this topic is, uh, is a nice one, people have come and uh, I want to take this opportunity to sincerely thank those who gave feedback from yesterday's. It was just a foundation and I hope that uh, those of us who watched yesterday, we are going to continue from where we left. We are looking at a mind, mental health, as part of the family life. Uh, I just want to start by saying that indeed, yesterday we were able to see how closely the mental health, your state of the mind, is related to the state of your family. Let me put it like that. Many at times, yes, we know that uh, the mind really influences a lot, and yesterday I said that we'll be looking at why mental health is so important and why mental health, why your mind needs to be healthy for, even for the gospel. Allow me to whisper a prayer. Precious Father, God of gods and King of kings, we lift your name high and adore you. Thank you for bringing this topic in the midst of the family life in a way that, Lord, your people may be aware, they may accept and act, because for a very long time we have not been knowing and understanding the role of our minds in all that we do. As we start, we welcome your presence. Start with us until we finish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, sometimes the Bible refers the mind as the mind, and sometimes also the Bible refers the mind when it's trying, it, actually it implies the mind when it's talking about the heart. But in the book of Matthew 22, verse 37, when Christ is actually summarizing the, the law, he puts it into two, which I know is the relationship between man and man, and the relationship between God and man in the Ten Commandments, he says that love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and he uses the mind. Very, very explicit. You cannot love God with all your mind if your mind is not okay, no wonder than the church. And I really want to appreciate that we are actually trying to appreciate the role of the mind, even in our salvation, even in our walk uh, with our God, and even in this journey of hope. So as we look at the hope of family, for families, that hope will make sense once we understand our minds and the role that it plays. Yesterday we looked generally, we tried to demystify what the mind is, and we realized that many at times when we talk about the issues of the mind or disorders of the mind, we have always thought about madness and it is not equivalent. At least those who are here, we were able to understand where the mind is and what it is. I said the mind is not just something that is, does not exist. It is, exists, and I use the an analogy of the computer, which has got two parts, the, hard, the hardware and the software. And we realize that the mind is actually the software of the brain, and as the computer cannot be a computer until there is a software, that is exactly who we are. Physically, we cannot really say we are human beings or we are living souls without looking at our mind. And as yesterday I promised, we really want to see why is it so important that we understand and appreciate the role of the mind in our lives. I know many of us may not have appreciated what actually the functions or yeah, the functions of the mind, if I may call it like that until you realize that you are nothing but what actually the mind is. And I said, I want to start by saying that many at times, as I will be going through this, the role of the mind in, in a, and, and what it controls, you'll be surprised that that will also be touching on actually how you find or you will know the signs and symptoms of mental disorders or mental illnesses. At the same time, it is going to tell us in that part of awareness that, oh, we can actually pick some of these changes in behavior, changes in all that we'll be looking at the aspects. And therefore, if I can't do anything, and if I can be able to help you, be able to know when you are spouse, when you are child, 
when your friend is looking or appearing differently to the extent that you can be able to help them, then I'll have done something. I'll have done justice. Amen? Yes. Now, many at times, as I say, that we do not diagnose mental disorders or mental illnesses in the laboratory or in X-ray, our diagnosis is mainly actually based on what we call the mental status examination. And we are looking at the mental status. We want to understand how is your mind in the various aspects, and that is what I'm going to look at. As you enter my room, if you are coming, even when you are coming to greet me, many other times people say psychiatrists read you from inside out. So when I look at you like this, your appearance tells me a bit of it. It will tell me whether you are actually okay in your mind. I'll be looking at your smiles. I'll be looking at how you have dressed. I could, I could be looking at your demeanor in general. And it will be able to give me whether we are okay. In appearance, we look a lot. We say a lot. Yan, we see a lot. There is a state where you find somebody is so, so, you know, is so restless that you are just pacing up and down. And in the appearance, as you look at somebody, there are those who will actually avoid eye contact. It tells you a lot about what is going on in that person. Sometimes when I teach about substance abuse and we talk about how one can pick change of behavior, you start by looking and therefore what am I trying to say? Know your people, know your spouse, know your child, know your friend, so that when things are changing, even as they appear, you are able to help and say, my friend, I have been with you for so many years, but there's something, something is actually happening, even the way you appear. There are people who will be very confident, and all of a sudden you find even that confidence of theirs has gone. You start wondering what has happened. And of course, there is a way we sometimes label people in terms of, oh, it's the, the company and all that. But I want to tell you that we can be able to pick these early signs of a, a, a problem with the mind if we are keen by looking at how people appear. But many at times we are so busy to even be able to appreciate how somebody is appearing. And you, by the way, for example, in a family, you find children can actually change completely, go wayward, and nobody has noticed. Why? We have not been keeping uh, keen on how they actually appear. So in this appearance, sometimes we actually look at people appearing bizarre. You know, you look at the person is actually doing a few things, maybe moving their eyes, and you have seen some people actually walking when they are already throwing their hands and everything. That is how they appear, and it will tell you something has changed. So, I am praying that at the end of the, this week that we'll be able to actually pick some of these things and we'll be able to say, so and so, or my friend, my child, my, my, my neighbor has actually changed in terms of even the way they appear. So that's how you, you look at them. And therefore, the mind controls our appearance, which has got many aspects. The second very important thing that our mind controls is the speech. The speech can be altered because of the mind that has changed. How? Sometimes you find people speaking so fast, we call it pressure of speech. People will talk nonstop. You will say, this is not normal. It is the mind that controls that speech. They mean the problem is not with the mouth. It's not with the muscles of the, the tongue. It is somewhere. It's coming from somewhere. So don't tell that person to stop because they, don't, they can't stop on their own. And sometimes, on the extreme, you find somebody who has been okay has what we call poverty of speech. They can't talk. You ask them, they have what we call monosyllabic kind of language. They can only say yes, no, oh. You see, they are just one word at a time. That also should ring a bell in you that this is different from the way this particular person has been speaking. So in the speech, you can have the extreme where somebody has a, 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 a pressured speech. They speak nonstop, and I think you have seen this one, in a, in a condition you call mania, and then or in, 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 in depression, people tend to be slow in speech. They, even when they are talking, 
They, are just, they, they just see like you are really disturbing them. What is your problem? Just leave me alone. They don't, I don't want to talk. And because of that, sometimes they actually want to stay alone. They lock themselves in the, in the, in the, in the rooms. They don't want to be disturbed. And somebody may say, ataki ah, kusumbuliwa. No, there's a problem. That is one of the things that we need to do. Then we need to pick. So speech, usually we know how we speak. And if we are keen, then we can be able to see when somebody's speech changes. And that should ring a bell in you. Sometimes as you appear, I say it about the eye contact. Many people, when they are suffering from the, like maybe stressful, depression, and other disorders, they would actually not want to even look at somebody. If somebody has what you call pathological grief, this is somebody who actually has what you call, sometimes uh, young people are calling balancing tears. They may not want to look at you because when they look at you, you might, they might actually start crying. So they will avoid the eye contact. Somebody with, with a, a, an unsteady mind will not want to interact because many at times they have what you call avoidant kind of a personality. They really want to be left alone. It is a good thing to be left alone, but not when it is a, a condition. So when we look at that, then we are likely to pick that appearance of the person. There's another aspect where, in terms of motor activity, somebody is not settled in one place. You look at somebody is here, they want to be here, they want to be always, and yet it is not like they're really going to do anything meaningful. Even when they are seated, they will always be changing. There's a lot of initiative around them. That is not normal then the problem is not about the legs to tell them to stop. The problem is coming from the mind, and that is how we actually diagnose. Another aspect that the mind controls so much is what you call mood. And I'm not talking about where we talk casually. I am not in the moods. I am talking about significant change in somebody's mood to the extent that it is clinically uh, uh, important. What are we talking about? You and me, the way we are, I, I'm not very sure that it's all of us. In a normal way, we are what we call euthymic mood, where you appropriately respond to the environment as it calls. When people are sad, you become sad. When people are happy, you become happy. But in a state where you find somebody is so low in terms of, regardless of the jokes you made, you make, it means that there's a problem with that, the mood. And that one, we call it the low mood where nothing excites this person, nothing really is important, and of course, the accompaniment of this low mood is a place where somebody walks with a lot of guilt, a lot of hopelessness, and generally inside, they are very, very sad. That is the change of mood. In other words, in, in the other extreme, you can have what we call expansile mood, or rather, uh, uh, yeah, elated mood, where somebody is happy regardless of the negative environment that is at, at that person. And th in this one, you find somebody so excited, full of energy, he laughs or she laughs, and that laughter is most of the time infectious. You will find yourself laughing with the person even without knowing why you are laughing because they are very excited. It is, they are not being moved, but they are actually from the mind. The mind is the one which has that. Sometimes you get what you call the mood can be very irritative. Somebody says that now they so and so is so irritable. Yes, it's irritable because things have changed. And if you have been very keen, for example, with your partner, you will be able to note and say, this one, I think I have seen a change even in, in their moods, because the mood is, is a function of the mind. This mind can be affected even when you have, for example, having physical illnesses, and of course that is the connection you'll be looking at. There's a very close connection between the mind and the body, such that when one is sick, the other one cannot be well at all. So, sometimes irritability can come because of the physical illnesses, but many at times it is associated with the changes in the mind, and more so when we have not slept well. Sleeping is one of the early signs we'll be looking at that will always raise an, an eye, eyebrow that's always not well in your mind. How else can you, have, can you find a mood change? The, change? the mood can change into a depressed mood, which I've talked about. 
adverse mood, which is usually a sign of depression. And as I said, the mood is so low that no amount of excitement does not change this person. And sometimes this is what is most of the time noticed in people uh, with the depression or with some mental illnesses. And this can cut across all the other disorders. We'll be looking at the types of mental disorders that we see, and you find that, honestly, the mood is controlled by the mind. The state of the mind can be uh, diagnosed through the mood. That's what we use. The other aspects that are so key in the mind is what we call cognition. Cognition, this is the cognitive function of the, the mind or the brain, and it has many, mainly four aspects. One of it is orientation. What does it mean? Many at times when somebody has a problem with the mind or has a mental disorder, the person does not know whether it is morning or evening. So the person is disoriented in time. The person may not be able to recognize somebody, even the person they have always known. And therefore, they are disoriented in person. If it is in the, in the, in the hospital, you, want, you expect the person in a normal mind, in a, a state of the mind that is what you call normal, somebody can be able to say, this is a nurse, depending on how they are dressed. You remember that. But if you ask, when the mind is not OK, this person might tell you, that one looks like a, an accountant, because they don't know. Because at least they are those, you know, like in uniform. When you talk about the place, many at times people are disoriented. When the minds are not OK, people may not know where they are. They might give you a totally different uh, answer when you are asking, do you know where you are? Yes, I know. Where are you? But I'm in my home. And this person could be in the hospital, could be in the market, could be somewhere else. So that is another aspect of the, what the mind controls, orientation. People, and that one you can also refer to it, a person gets confusion. The confusion is, a, is, is, is as a result of a sick mind. And therefore, we, are, uh, we assess that, and it is able to tell us the severity of even the condition that the patient is presenting with. Now, uh, in terms of uh, uh, that still uh, uh, orientation, you may find that people may have a problem identifying objects because they are not able to associate the object with what it is. Now, the other aspect that is cogn uh, in cognitive function is the memory. Many of us talk about, nowadays, I forget a lot. Sometimes when you have, for example, severe stress, many times memory may fail you. You might find that what, wherever you are, whatever you used to recall so easily, it's becoming very difficult to, to remember. And this one, of course, we have the aspects of memory, which is the immediate, the remote, and the, the long term. We find that in, uh, in mental disorders, or the, when the mind is not OK, you will have problems with this memory, and depending on which kind, which disorder, some actually have the immediate one, have the long term, and the, the other one have the short term. And that one, we are able to actually understand what the problem is in the mind. At the same time, the memory can actually come because of age. So let, don't always imagine that this, when the age, when somebody is very old and is able to forget one, two, three. Don't always imagine that the person has a mental disorder. Yes, age can actually affect uh, memory in some, in some way. And also, this memory can also be affected by a medical condition. But in that one, is because the medical condition can easily also uh, cause a mental disorder. Uh, there is a disease called dementia, which is also a mental disorder, mostly for old age. But it can also come in young people, depending on uh, uh, the, uh, the problems they have had, especially even in substance abuse. And therefore, one of the characteristics of dementia is memory uh, problems. The other aspects of, uh, in the cognitive function is what you call the judgment. And, and then judgment, or rather, sorry, affect, where an affect is when you, uh, how you uh, respond, for example, uh, a situation where you are supposed to be excited, 
you actually, you are flat or you are indifference or you inappropriately respond to the, 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 the what is expected in your mood. Uh, the, other, the other aspects of the mind is what we call perception. And this is usually one of the signs that at least even a layman has been able to pick when things are not so well, when people talk about hallucinations. Perception is a, a function of the mind such that when you have a problem with the mind, then you are going to have a problem in terms of your senses, five of them. And many of us say the person sees and hears things that are not there. Who told you they are not there? Those things are there as far as that person is concerned because they are real. And many a times when we tell them, no, you are not seeing your own things, the person will look at you and wonder, what is your problem? I am actually seeing. I remember one time, uh, one man was getting sick. And so when they are seated in the family setting, he responds to questions that has not been asked. So the children look at her and say, Daddy, what is happening? And the wife is like, and then he's so much annoyed, they say, what do you mean is happening? You ask me a question when I answer, you are telling me what is happening. And that is real, because him is answering a question which he has had, but nobody has asked the question. So when he was brought, he said, you know, they are telling me that I am mad, that I'm hearing things, and they are the ones who are asking me questions. A friend of mine brought the brother, and the brother was having those hallucinations, and, uh, but this one was alcohol-related. So as we were standing, he starts saying, fire, fire. You know, he, he sees himself burning the justice. And then I tell him, can you put it off? And then he puts it off, he puts it until it's over. And I say, is it over? Yes. So the sister is like, what is happening, doctor? I said, yes, there was fire. He has put it off and it is over. What happens? In perception, when you have a problem with the mind because of the neurotransmitters, what we call it, hallucinations, not seeing things which are not there, but it's a perception without a stimulus. If I was to uh, raise my Bible, for those of you who are seated here, you will see a Bible. Why have you seen a Bible? It's because the light has hit the Bible, has come to you, and your mind has interpreted that there's a Bible there, and therefore you are able to say, yes, there is a Bible there. But when there is a problem with the mind in these perceptual disorders, you perceive without a stimulus, because this is a stimulus, and that is what you call hallucinations. So please don't tell people that they are not seeing anything. Hello? Because they are, isn't it? Respond to them. And this one also contributes to what we see, some of these ones, when it is so bad, their behavior, which we'll be looking at, the change of behavior, is actually related to what the perceptual disorder they have. Many at times they will see you that you want actually you are, want to attack them, and therefore they will fight you back before you hit them. And in this one, some of them has, has caused people to cause harm, for example, arson, murder, and everything, but because they were not in their stable mind. One guy we had in the, in the hospital, Madari Hospital, he woke up at night and he was having the hallucinations. And this, they had this, you know, we know back home we share beds so much. Nowadays is when we try so much to give each one his or our own bed. But uh, it is a, a tradition that people could share, you know, the brothers and others. So he woke up in the night. They were staying with the brother sleeping. And because of the hallucination, he saw a snake in the bed. And obviously, don't think that when somebody has a, a problem with the mind or a perception, that everything is lost. No. He was able to know that if there is a snake, I have to go for something and kill the snake. And that is exactly what he did. So when he came, he hid the snake and he killed the snake. But you know what the snake was? It was the brother. It, so it was real for him who was killing the brother. When you are telling you, the snake, so the following morning, of course, he had killed. And because of murder, that's how he landed in, in Madara. Because when you do that, there is a rule we call McNaughton's rule, whereby if it is proved beyond that you committed that crime when you were insane, then you are committed under what you call special category. So sometimes people can do things 
in self-defense because of the state of their mind. And uh, that is what we call perceptual disorders. That is how we assess them. And uh, the other one is what we call uh, in the thought disorders, the thoughts. You know, many at times when I am teaching and I, I, sometimes I want to understand, if people understand what the mind is, always the people say, the mind is about thoughts. I said, no, thought is not equivalent to the mind. But we have also the mind controlling the thoughts. No wonder that people think that the mind is equivalent to thoughts. Yes, it controls the thoughts and therefore the thoughts can, the thoughts can be uh, different when the mind is not okay. This is where we have what we call suicidal, uh, uh, suicidal thoughts and ideations. We always ask this, if all those who have committed or completed suicide, I am told nowadays we don't say committed suicide, we say who have died from suicide because we are trying to destigmatize that. Eh? So they don't commit suicide, they die from suicide. Hello, are we together? So when they, those who have tried and uh, maybe have not, uh, have not uh, succeeded, invaluably they have these thoughts. We call them negative thoughts. And they are usually not easily forthcoming. You must know how to ask. And therefore you start from far. Has life been so meaningless that even you have no reason to continue living? And they look at you and say, how did you know? Hello? And then they say, Sometimes, have you tried to actually even actualize it and make it right? And they tell you, you know, some it is not a big deal. They say, yes, I have done it three times, I've done it, three, but I've not succeeded. So those suicidal thoughts is a thought disorder that actually is controlled by the mind. And therefore, we assess that, and this one many at times will tell us the severity of the mental disorder. You can have suicidal thoughts in schizophrenia, but they are very, very common in depression. And that has, it doesn't mean that somebody who is depressed is one who is so gloomy. Yes, we talked of a low mood, but not every person has that low mood. We can always fake and actually overcome that low mood because sometimes one is self-aware. The other thing is, under the thoughts are delusions. Delusions, these are thoughts of sometimes of so much importance attached to yourself. In people with mania, they are what we call delusions of grandeur. They will tell you they are the most important, in fact, they are the, most, the next presidents of the country. And they, you, know, you look at them and say, you have never even campaigned. How are you going to become a president? They will always tell you, in fact, they have been sent to save the world because they are actually Christ. And they mean that. I remember one of my patients, he was telling me, you know, these guys are very jealous of me. He's talking about the brothers who have come. They are, very, they are very jealous because they know I am a lawyer, I am a doctor, and, and you know, they can't compete with me. So you know, I was even in Gertrude, so you saw me seeing patients. Now what do you tell that person? He's, he's actually a lawyer, he's a doctor, and he's everything. And he feels big. Those are delusions of grandeur. And you can have other delusions, you can have thoughts of aggression, you can have thoughts of all, all, even in some thoughts that one may think that people are against them and therefore they want to secure a good place and this is how you find people withdrawing from others and living in isolation. Diseases are uh, problems of thought. The other thing that really controls our mind is now the whole body, how you behave. You know, sometimes we think we are behaving a certain way because of uh, our physical and all that, but that is the control. That the, 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 the mind is the one determines on how you are going to have. And that is how I want us to be aware. Let us understand our friends, our family members' behavior so that when they change, we are able to help them. And this behavior can be as as, 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 as valid as possible that one can decide to be overtly behaving abnormally. But then it is the small, small ones that I want you to note. When somebody who are, we have been engaging and dating very well gets easily annoyed and just walks away maybe in your discussion, think about it. 
just the, what has happened. Somebody who can to not tolerate a few of the things that they have known, and therefore they walk away, they would even turn violent, they would be verbally violent. That is something to note. Behavior and the mental illness, that might be the only presentation. I have a patient that we have worked with over 10 years now. His was just behavior change, and you know, people thought that he was just difficult in behavior. He married three times. The first wife left with two children, they said, no, this is enough, so she left. He married the next one, he said, wow, this one I can't. She left with one child. And the guy looked at himself and said, now what could be happening? He decided now to marry in church, the third one. But you know, the behavior had not changed. So even that one said, no, enough is enough, so he left. And when he came to my place, there was a poster that we have written of course, sometimes you read and just look and say, and I looked and said, this looks like me. <laughs> this is how I feel. He didn't know that there was a problem. The three ladies did not even pick it. So he came and asked, is there a doctor who treats this? Is this a problem? And is there a doctor who can treat this one? They were still, yes. She comes in the evening, and when we started, and I started her on medication, and of course the problem was not the behavior, the problem was the mind, he changed and he was able to appreciate and said, wow, this is why my family has not been working three times. When he became better, and he was, he was, now he had to reach out to the youngest. He said, you know what? I have been told I was sick and I can appreciate I am sick because now I'm better. The lady said, no, 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 no. If you are better, good for you, please continue. Hello. <laughs> so, and uh, she actually even asked her to come and see me so that I can explain. But the lady said, no, what I saw, I don't want again. But of course, the man had changed because he had been treated. And when he came, he came to me, asked, Dr. now what do I do? Because even the first ones will not come, they can't. And they told me, of course, now there's somebody who is a girlfriend, who is my girlfriend, and they said, fine, what do you do? Go ahead and marry that one. So then the one who married, her when, or married him when he had uh, been treated, they have been together for 10 years now, and they have three children, and she has not left. Mental health is also treatable. It only takes a, a what? A behavior to notice that all is not well. How I many of us? Have we ever associated even the problems we have in families to do with the mental health? None. We will always talk about difficult children. And by the way, even if those, the things that Dr. Mutai will tell you, the tantrums are actually part of the, the mind, isn't it? The diseases of the mind. Children also have mental health issues when they are young. And the changes and the pressures that we have exposed our children with are likely to present in different ways. Now, there is also what we call uh, uh, the bizarre behavior, and I think this is what most of us will pick. Bizarre behavior is abnormal. Where people are talking on the streets and themselves, when they are just behaving, somebody uh, comes and uh, he goes to the toilet, Instead of going to the toilet, he puts it aside, and you go and stuck and say, what is happening? You know, those are bizarre behaviors, isn't it? And some will come, you give them food, if it's fruits, even if it's an or and an, uh, is it a lemon? I remember the guy that we was, you give a lemon, he will eat everything. You know, he doesn't even know that they are actually, has. those are bizarre behaviors. That is part of behavior change. And by the way, they help. They, they help. Did you know that majority of us, miss out this behavior, especially in substance abuse. There will definitely be changes in behavior once a, a, either a child or a spouse or whatever has started indulging in substance abuse. They will start avoiding you. They will always be locked in their rooms. They will always want to have perfumes and all those, you know, you, this, this, this girl or this boy has never been so close and so excited about perfumes, all of a sudden they have. Has it ever occurred to you to ask, son, how comes nowadays you use perfume so much? Hello? 
and they will brand it here and they will, you will never see that. Let us be keen on behavior because it will tell us what is happening in, in our loved ones' minds. There's another one that actually we call judgment. Judgment is decision making. When somebody has a problem, and I think you've noted this, it starts as earlier as stressful situation, even before the mental health disorder sets in, somebody finds it very difficult to make decisions. Very indecisiveness in terms of you are told this is wrong, this is not right, and then another person will say, no, it is, it, it, is not, it is not wrong. So somebody is not independent. Difficult in decision making. And of course, the other aspect that I want to finish in speaking that we always miss is what you call concentration. Thank God that all of you are very keen. I believe both the online and those who are seated. When you see this child of yours dropping in class, dropping in performance, what comes through your mind? He has joined the wrong company. True or false? Maybe he has started drugs or something is not serious. Have you ever imagined that actually this could be a problem with the mind and the person and the boy or the girl is not concentrating in class and therefore he just goes down? I pray that you will be able to be aware of this so that we are more keen. One lady I talked to and whom I told, I said that uh, I wish more, more, all of us could be like that. She was so keen. Whenever the children come to sc uh, from school, is very keen. What was your performance and everything? But from nowhere, the children started dropping. And she was like, no. Uh, instead of concluding that it could be maybe they are playing alone a lot in school or, some, or the company, she actually, you know, that was really uh, very, very uh, strategic. She decided, I want to go up to check uh, professionally what's happening. And when the children were assessed, there's what you call indigenous depression that runs in families. Maybe if I have time, I'll be talking about it. So the children were actually developing depression. And indeed, they already had moderate to severe. And when they were assessed, and they were treated, and the graph just picked like this. These are things that we can control. Let us not demonize our children and always think the obvious that maybe the child plays a lot in school or whatever. Can you actually pick that one and, if possible, take the child to a, a professional to be able to assess? If there is nothing picked, then we can be able now to look at the environment and say, what is it? Is it that this child doesn't like the teacher and everything? And, and you know, it's all about the mind. And if it is a, the, if the, 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 the school and whatever, it is still the mind. But what is important, let us not be fast in actually concluding. Finally, there is what we call the insight I talked about. The mind controls whether the person knows whether he's sick or knows. I talked about the insight yesterday. And the insight is that the person who is sick has no capacity to appreciate that the mind is unwell. And therefore, it needs you and me to be able to appreciate, to actually looking at all these aspects that the mind controls and be able to say, yes, I can see a difference in this person in terms of the way nowadays he appears. You know, somebody who used to be very neat, they don't care anymore how their hair looks, how even the, the dress looks, you are just there. The, some of the things, the appearance and loss of interest, they actually, they avoid even going to gym. You know, people who are very keen in terms of, uh, you know, keeping their weight, so somebody doesn't care whether he's weighing 100 or whatever. Those are the telltale signs that we need to pick. And therefore, when we find that our loved ones have an issue and they cannot be able to accept it is us to be able to accept on their behalf and take action. I think I want to thank you so much. Thank you, the online viewers. And thank you, and I believe that uh, we should be having um, a session for q and And if you have any question, you can always write. I will always answer. Those who are watching online, you can always write it on the chat. May God bless you. Can we say thank you to God for being with us? Yes. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of gathering here and, and, and listening. 
and understanding the role of the minds in our lives. Even, Lord, you tell us to love you with all our mind, our heart, and soul. I pray that we may continually develop a healthy mind that will help us even this Christian walk. Thank you because you've accepted in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.